Hi, I'm here at Cable's Next Gen Technologies Conference. I've got John with, from Digicon with me. So John, people refer to the middle mile of the network. Tell me what that means. The middle mile to me is really where the long haul network drops off. You go to the router switches in a hub that may be a brick and mortar facility. Typically brick and mortar are a very solidly constructed right. you know, wood structure frame building. Uh, and that's where all your, today, the middle mile is typically analog transmitters oh, going okay. out to HSC nodes or it's 10 gig optics maybe going out to OLTs or 10 gig optics going to uh, enterprise customers or to uh, cellular backhaul, all that so kind of really stuff. So it's really kind of a hub for a lot of different it's, types it's, of, uh, yeah, interconnections, yes, I guess. Yes, it's a lot of activity that goes Lots on in activity. there today. Yep, and, and that range today can go with the HFC optics can go maybe, you know, a kilometer or so out as far as maybe, you know, 100, 120 kilometers with okay. analog optics. Now, so, as far as the uh, Digicom, what kind of services do you provide in the middle mile? So we at Digicom do a lot of that transport design, specking and products. So we manufacture EDFAs and MUXs and, and all various parts of the network and we spec those in so we do the designs as a complementary service to the customer and and lay out the optical layer where that needs to go typically 48 10 gig e transports kind of stuff going down whether it's enterprise or or uh pawn or daa okay. in the future mm -hmm. and that network then in the future will go you know much much farther than it does today because of the analog optics which may be suitable for many customers for a long time to come yet oh really moving to a daa environment will obviously allow them to go great, greater distances, maybe three times the distance, which mm -hmm. you can with analog optics today, and, now, and better fiber density. Okay, now you've been in the industry a long time, as have I, so what sort of technological advances in the middle mile do you think have been the kind of most transformative? I mean, I, I think back on that, and I was playing with optics when they first came into the cable TV market okay. and doing the rotary mechanical splices in the back of a van and <laughs> and uh, getting to play with it all the way up to when LEML technology came into play. I was at Cisco, and that was really a game changer on performance and distance that you could get from a hub. Mm -hmm. uh, then Comscope, our partner Comscope, uh, they came out with the LEML at the same time. So today we deal with both Comscope and or Cisco LEML designs, and that was a huge step up. Now with the DAA environment moving from, you know, uh, a few wavelengths on a fiber going to potentially 48 wavelengths on a fiber. So your density is, is much, much greater going forward from a fiber utilization standpoint and distance. Your return with the advent of digital return in the past looks very much the same as it did. Dispersion compensation stuff will change, but very much the same there. DAA is a big topic here today. Um, so networks are constantly evolving. How does Digicom help customers stay kind of on the cutting edge? I think we work and learn from, you know, I've learned from a lot of very smart people over my career and, and at Scientific Atlanta get to go stand in front of their desk and talk to them and mm -hmm. dumb it down for me so I understand. And, and today you get to work with, you know, the Comscopes of the world and the AOIs of the world and learn how they're building amplifiers, learn about the total composite power capability and be able to, to you know, consult with your customers on how to do that. Also consult with customers as to what, you know, what is the right story for them? What's the right product for them? Right. It's not all the same. I mean, you may have a, a small customer that, that has already fiber, you know, no plus one architecture, or no plus zero architecture. Do they need to go DAA? Probably not. Hmm. Maybe a high split or a mid split upgrade might be all they need. Yeah, I'm hearing that. It's sort of everyone's kind of taking a different path depending on what they need. Right. That seems to be a common theme. So can you give an example of an innovative approach to the network or a breakthrough product that Digicom provided to a client? Yeah, it's kind of funny. Just here uh, a couple months ago, actually two months today, uh, we we're talking about there's a there's a huge demand in the market for the GS7000 node, which was end of life from Cisco. And the digital return capability for that node was end of life as well. And there's more GS7000s available than there is the digital return. Well, if you're doing a traditional high split or sub split or mid split network today, you still need a digital return to do that. Well, can't get the Cisco one anymore. So it's like our partner Comscope, it made a perfectly good sense that they have a perfectly good digital return. 
So take a page out of the gap note kind of concept or the Vesima with the adapter plate or the harmonic mm -hmm. with the adapter plate going into an RPD into somebody else's note. We can come up with an adapter plate pretty simply that goes into the GS7000 that converts from the Comscope digital return to the GS7000 note. Story solved. Solving their problem. For the problem for the customer. That's now great. they can make their their embedded base live on and new new embedded base live on with that until they're ready to go full DAA. Great. So uh, the global landscape for ISPs and OSPs is, is rapidly changing. What trends do you see emerging in network deployment? And how should service providers kind of prepare for this? I mean, the ISP part is drastically changing, I think more so than the OSP really? part of the network. Uh, you're looking at that once, if they go DAA, that network is really looking much more like a data center. Uh -huh. You know, you don't have any RF combining, RF amplifiers. There's no more RF in that, that environment at all. It's all router switches and, mm. you know, it's all, and then optics out, 10 gig optics out kind of thing. Uh, the outside plant is changing, uh, probably to a different split, right? The, the 5 to 42 meg return split is probably not sufficient going forward. So will they go a, a, a mid split or a high split? You know, so they've probably got some changes to do there. If they stay with a 1.2 gig product, there are taps and passives in the field, which you know, there's been a lot of conversations this morning yep. on that, that can live on in the network. Or if they move to a 1.8 gig network, if they're gonna take a full advantage of that 1.8, all those taps and passives, most of them have to be changed out. Hmm. And it might be more than a faceplate change out. It might be a, you know, a haul, pull out and re-splice. So the outside plant is, is definitely changing, but the DAA kind of concept keeps things going as the traditional cable person always has done, right? The bandwidth's expanding, but it's the same process, same job they've done forever. So that's the nice thing about it. Right, great. John, thank you for joining me today. Thank you.